I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Print Reading. Today we're going to be looking at how to read a set of construction drawings that's set up for a residential addition. If you're in the renovation sector or remodeling sector and you do additions on houses, this would be what a set of drawings would typically look like. I'm using a set of TACBOC details and that just simply means Toronto Area Chief Building Officials Committee did up these drawings and they're like a sample drawing of what they would expect for drawings that are submitted for a residential addition to a house. Now, if you've been watching previous videos in the series where we've been going through different elements like floor plans and site plans and elevations, um, these are very similar. It's just that you're dealing with an existing house and you're adding something to it. Uh, if you want to go back in the series, I have links listed below and you can go back and you can watch a series of the videos. You can click subscribe. That helps build the community. It helps get more um, hits so that people keep viewing the actual videos. Um, so please do that. I'm a professor of construction management and I've been teaching this for decades and I've been working with construction professionals in all the different sectors in construction. So there's a lot of different viewpoints and nuances that go on and you'll pick these up in um, the different videos. I also have videos on project management, planning and scheduling, MS project that you may find of interest, construction business management as well, uh, on my playlists on my site. Okay, let's get started. So right off the bat, I've got a site plan here and the site plan, which we've explained in other videos, uh, is essentially the building lot and the house that's on it. Now you'll notice that there's kind of a hatching and it says proposed one story addition. So this is what's being added to the house. The existing house stops here and you're adding this onto the back, proposed deck. And of course it has a compass orientation to say that this is north. All right, so we can see what the setbacks are for the house from the property lines. Uh, and we can see that uh, this has a proposed deck as I mentioned to, on it. And usually what I like to do is I like to sort of review the different pages fairly quickly so I can conceptualize what's going on when I get a new set of drawings. So yes, I want to look at the site plan. I want to look at the parameters. If you're visiting the site, you want to make sure that things correspond and make sense to you. You want to look at the existing buildings on each side these days too. With Google Maps, you could um, have a drive by. And even if you're not at the site yet, get a, a good sense of the site, see the houses, um, how close they are to each other, proximity. Because don't forget, you're going to be building on this particular site. You've got to be looking at, well, what's going to be the access to the rear of the house and how easy is that going to be in to bring in can we bring in an excavator do we have to use a mini excavator what's involved here uh, so i usually go down and of course at the bottom on the site plan it's got a whole bunch of information now these drawings are in metric because i'm in canada uh, i'm very familiar with imperial trust me half most of our low-rise buildings they're done in imperial because these are done by building officials our building code is in metric um, so you might see the measurements, those are in millimeters. You just substitute feet and inches on, you know, residential drawings in Canada or US or other locations. Usually this kind of information has to do with um, zoning. And zoning is in particular looking at what uh, are you allowed to do on this lot. And there's usually a lot of constraints that each town or city will have saying, for example, how far you can have the front of the house from the property line. How much coverage can the house have on the overall pro uh, property as a percentage? You know, these are some examples, but again, zoning is like one of these enigmas that can change from state to state and province to province and town to town and city to city, mostly town to town and city to city, because it's usually a municipal um, restrictions that are applied. So uh, you can see that's all that. And I'm not going to get into too much detail on that because it, it varies so much per area. But what you do need to know is, does this satisfy when it says like percent allowed, does it satisfy these requirements that the city has? Because they're going to review it. And if it doesn't, they're going to give it back to you and say, well, no, you're 
you're over the allowed gross floor area for this site or you're over the allowed lot coverage for this particular site. So let's move on. That's the site plan. All right, so now we're at the basement plan, also referred to as a foundation plan. And you can sort of see the hatching. This is what's new. This is what's being added to this particular building. This is what's existing. So it's not, it's kind of looking like it's got not too much detail, but where you've got the hatching, you see a lot more detail, a lot more measurements, because this is telling you how big this addition is going to be on this house. And you're seeing basically the width and you can see the length. And then you can also see the addition of the deck and the size of uh, the deck and the center line for basically the sauna tubes that will be supporting the deck here. You also see these hexagon symbols and we've talked about those. They're very frequently used. They're not always used, but very frequently used to reference construction notes. So when we go further down, you'll see towards the end, there's a set of construction notes. Very often construction notes are on the first page of the drawings. In this case, they happen to be on the last page of the drawings. Um, but that doesn't really matter as long as you've got a reference point. And then if I read up on that, it's going to give me information. Like perhaps this is going to give me information about the concrete for the floor slab that's going to go in. Um, this is going to perhaps give me information about um, the wall that's being removed. Um, so you can sort of see um, what it would be referring to. Like number two should give me information regarding the foundation, and the foundation walls, the footing sizes, etc. And you also notice at first look, there's like an A and an A, and that's a cutting plane line. That means somewhere there's going to be a section that cuts through this and is looking to in that direction that the arrow is pointing. So there's gonna be a cut through of the house that we can sort of see inside what's going on. So I'm always looking for cutting plane lines. So I know, okay, there's gonna be a section detail that I can look at and refer to to understand better what's going on in this wall. All right, and so that's basically the basement plan sometimes referred to as the foundation plan and all the existing stuff that's there. Now we're at the first floor and again you can kind of see what's new going on all through here by looking at the hatchings here so when I can zoom in on this a little bit that hatching is is a hatching for brick this other hatching is a hatching for insulation so that's telling me several things one I'm going to have a brick veneer on the outside two it's going to be a wood frame wall on the inside with bad insulation is what it's looking like. All right, so that's giving me some pretty good information there. Again, I can see the dimensions of uh, the addition, how much it's going out, and the size of the deck. So all of that information with the extension lines and dimension lines are there. I can also see there's a solid masonry fireplace here. So a solid masonry fireplace. Usually we don't do too many solid masonry fireplaces anymore. Usually we're more uh, likely to use like a gas insert or something like that. Although if you're in a more rural area, they're still reasonably popular, but usually they have a insert in, uh, because uh, you want to capture as much heat as possible. And plus, People often don't like dealing with cutting uh, wood and logs and putting it in a natural um, wood fireplace, uh, but uh, you can still do it. So we've got that cutting plane line going through. You can see here these dash lines. All right, so see all these little dash lines there and see the dash lines going right through here. And you can see where there is existing windows. So these. These are existing windows and that's the existing wall and that's got to come out because this is going to be opened up. So the addition is going to come, it's going to come out here and this is going to be open. So this kitchen is going to open out into this breakfast area, right? Or whatever you want to call it uh, here. So we've got that there and it's going to be wide open, wide open. And it's going to put in 438 by 235 so it's going to be a built-up wood beam so four pieces of two by um, two by 12 or two sorry two by 10 is going to go in there so four pieces of two by 10 are going to go in that spot right 
over top. And we'll look at the section detail. Uh, again, it's showing that AA. That's how I know it's going to go through the whole house. It's on each floor. And we'll look at, well, how is that going in over top? Are we going to have a flush ceiling between the two rooms? Is it going to drop down? What's going to go on there? Um, we can also see the closet and we can see the doors. And look, there's a number. So number two, number four. That's indicating to me that there is going to be a door schedule somewhere for these new doors that we're going to be installing. Like here, there's going to be a linen closet put in uh, with a bathroom. There's going to be, see these walls, the dashed lines again? Those are going to come out. They must be existing. And then those are going to come out. So that's going to be uh, put into that place. And it looks like originally there was an attic access over here. All right. And I'm going to assume that's going to come out. You don't want the attic access in the middle of the bathroom ceiling. And it's being placed over here. So that's going to be moved over to there, that attic access um, hatch. We can also see the direction. Now, we could have seen that on the, on the uh, first floor, but we can see the direction of the um, rafters and collar ties that's going in here and what, what's that's referring to, right? Uh, we can go down here and again see the layout. Usually I'll think about from a, a drawing perspective, you know, you come in the front door, this is all existing stuff and then, oh, through here, we're going to see everything new. This will all be gutted and there'll be a new kitchen put in and then, oh, there's going to be a doorway here and this is going to open up. So part of this is existing room area but we're taking out walls so that basically this was probably a bedroom before and so that's why these walls here are going we want to put in this bathroom here so that we can see it nice and wide open into the bedroom and we're going to have this nice walk-in closet to the left so you're trying to visualize this as you're going through this now let's take a little bit of a look on the outside what's going on well on the outside we have um, we have uh, an addition put onto the house, as we said. We've got a masonry chimney up here. Uh, we've got a addition going on to the uh, back of the house. So on the side elevation, the east elevation, we can see the uh, brickwork and we can see the existing. So we see the brickwork here and the, the addition going on and then this is all existing it says all to remain so this roof here is going to be built on top and it looks like it's a hip roof okay it's going to be built on top of the existing roof so you're gonna to have to line up the slope you're gonna do probably what uh, lay down a uh, plate on the roof and then your jacks are gonna run down to the existing roof over here the other side same idea except this window which probably was like in maybe there was an existing bathroom there or that maybe that was the bedroom uh one of the bedroom windows um so here that's going to be bricked up because that's going to be closed in so good idea probably just some advice i'd be looking at this and i'd be thinking okay we'll never match the brick uh but when you take down that rear wall uh, to open up for the addition, save some of those brick, and then you can fill this in. So at least this is a match. If you get a pretty co close match here, you can, you know, have a just a vertical joint here. Maybe you put a downspout over here to kind of hide it. Those are some little tips and tricks you can do when you're actually doing construction, if that works. You notice the slope says 1 to 2. I never really see that. Uh, usually it's always a ratio to 12. But if I did see that, I know that that just means 6 to 12 right one to tw one to two is the same as six to twelve all it means is for every for every two inches you go along you go up one inch right for every 12 inches you go along you go up six inches it'll give you the same slope um so if you ever see that where it's like a ratio and it's like why isn't it to 12 um you can easily adjust it um to uh, suit 12 usually especially if it's done with even numbers uh okay so we've got that addition. We've got we can see also these sauna tubes here and the sauna tubes and the um, deck and that's going out there. Uh, so that's going to be for that deck that we saw in plan view. And so oh there we go. There's that section detail. Let's rotate that. So I'm just going to rotate this on my drawing here. 
so that you can see it. There it is. All right. So now we've got this. We've got this uh, section detail AA. Remember those cutting plane lines AA. That's cutting through this addition. So basically, I can see the footings. I can see the weeping tile. I can see um, the foundation wall. And again, we've got all of these reference numbers so that we can really come to grips with what are the materials that are being used. There is that built up wood beam that I was discussing with you. So the built up wood beam is going across there. Um, and that's going to be supporting over the opening there. And so you're going to have a flush ceiling through here. I noticed that the joists are moving out here in the addition. It's going across. Notice it goes up there. I'm not really a fan of that. Because you got like a little bump in the ceiling in the basement. You might want to think about that, that you would want to build this down, maybe to have it flush. Usually ceiling height is at a premium. So that's the other thing with basements. That would be a decision that would have to be made at some point. But it wouldn't be structural if this has basically been designed for um, a certain size. It wouldn't have to be um, structural for that reason. Okay. So we've got that and uh, we've got that section detail going through. Okay, let's go to the next sheet and let's bring those around. All right. So this is where all those hexagon symbols are. And this is where you find out detailed information about the walls, brick veneer wall, like I said, uh, information about the face brick, the airspace. Uh, there's always an airspace between the brick and the framing. Uh, foundation wall look there's where the footing sizes are found 450 by 150 um, to bear on undisturbed soil and so it basically is giving you the detailed information that you need to know about uh, the concrete footing so on this particular video I just wanted to introduce you to the references how the addition is laid out and some of the detailed information and i'm just going to scroll up and we've looked at the west elevation and it's basically by compass direction we've talked about in the previous videos um, the east elevation i'll maybe shrink this down a little bit uh, the north elevation And then all of that information uh, here on the floor plan, the first floor plan. The foundation plan. So there's another built up wood beam that we saw in the section detail that's going to go across. The floor joist direction. So they're basically for the first floor. They're going in this direction here. All right. This is the existing direction of the existing floor joist. Always nice to know, uh, especially if you're thinking about running duct work. Um, and some of the issues that you may run into with regards to things like um, ductwork and things of that nature. Um, number one, you've got ductwork here and it's showing going through there. I'm just hypothesizing right now, live looking at this, I would be looking at uh, my section detail uh, going down here. And I'll just circle that around again. And you see how this is like here, right? So you got a beam there. You're not gonna be able to run ducts through a beam. So that might cause some bulkheads or some interesting discussions on what's the best way to run your ductwork to get into this area when you've got a beam going across. And the beam, you'd look at that and you say, okay, well, how's that ductwork gonna get into there? And you'd run back up here and I'll just rotate that around here. This is running through there, right? So that looks pretty easy, doesn't it? But it might not be so easy. You might have to um, detail something for that um, ductwork to get in there, which might not be um, so pleasant depending on how uh, that's laid out. All right. so. Hope you've enjoyed this introduction to this renovation uh, set of drawings. I'm going to do a follow-up where I'm going to go in a little bit more detail into each one. But as I've said in previous videos, 
you really want to orient yourself to what's going on the site the spatial requirements the overall layout go through each drawing get a little bit familiar and then you can get into the weeds about where you're starting and how you're going to go and approach uh, the construction of this particular project and any potential problems that you might see like i was just pointing out with the ductwork um, so I'm Tom Stevenson. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on uh, how to read uh, drawings for a residential edition. Don't forget that the hexagons are your reference points there. Your cutting plane lines will show you a detail on another drawing to reference that you're looking inside the building. And don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.